to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. That you will blow, blow, blow like a mighty Spirit of victory Cover us with your life. Our declaration tonight. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty Pastor Shola, thank you again. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. I was so blessed. Did you know that, let me just say a word or two and then we'll sit down. I was so touched by the power of Minister Dunsin's ministration. I love him very much right from my room. I know when people minister from the Spirit. And I was just looking forward to it. I kept telling my protocol, is it not time for us to leave this place? I mean, I just wanted to enjoy that atmosphere. There are not many vessels that are yielded. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. First of all, please let's sit for a few minutes. It's a miracle service. And... Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Your kingdom come, let your will be done. Yahweh, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Yahweh, I want to bless you, God. And he says, we speak this wisdom in a mystery. Like Minister Dusu was saying, there are times that it just looks like you are speaking gibberish. However, there are communications in the realm of the spirit. It doesn't make sense to shout and say, oh yeah, what, what does that mean? It's the same thing that was on the wall, mene, mene, tekel, ufesen. And one word, mene, means, oh king, you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. One, one communication in the spirit. So we're not, we're not wasting our time tonight. If this is all we do and begin to minister, we, we are here to announce to Abel Kuta one more time that there is a king that sits upon the throne.
raise your voice in one minute and insist whatever must live your life this night whatever must live your destiny this night i like you to declare like a priest that you are in the name of jesus the god of jeshua that rides upon the wings of the wind i declare that the blood the blood will flow in this place taking every misery from my life taking every shame from my life abel kuta you pray
It's a very defining moment. I see crowds right to the car park. Let me tell you this. It doesn't matter where you are tonight. I believe that that flood. Did the Bible not say there is a river that flows from the throne of God? Hallelujah. And that as it flows, everything that must live your life must live tonight. And everything that must be manifest in your life will be manifest. In the name of Jesus. Now, it truly is a burden in my heart every time I have the opportunity to bring the word of God and to minister to God's people. And now I am more touched because tonight is the final session. And then for a number of years, this kind of convergence under this platform may not hold here again. And that means that everything that happens tonight must be prophetic and it must be received as such. Hallelujah. And tonight is a miracle service and so we have a lot to do. I just want to give a charge and then we'll pray. I truly believe that the message was captured tonight in the worship. That if you had the discernment to understand, then you will see that the Lord was saying several things through the songs, through the words, ministering to our spirits, challenging us to a higher level of depth, hunger, and passion for God. Hallelujah. For many years, I wondered why God would use certain people, Pastor, that in every generation, like I would always say, God would seem to find a few people. We had a very touching discussion yesterday uh, after the service, and um, um, we were just discussing why mantles and graces uh, do not seem to reproduce themselves evidently in the lives of people. That means that you would hardly, you would find people who were trained by the careers of these graces. You would find people who were mentored by the careers of these graces. But you will seldom find a people in their numbers reproducing the unction and the grace that they were trained under. In spite of the impartations that happened, please listen tonight. In spite of all of the... In the Bible, there was almost no instance of more than a person or two carrying a man of God's grace. Elijah had a band of prophets he was mentoring. He was not mentoring them to just loiter around. Did you know we never hear the exploits of those sons of the prophet? Never. All through scripture. They were trained and wasted. But there was a farmer that had no business being in the school. But something about the rules of the spirit drove that man. There was no prophecy that Elisha was supposed to carry the grace upon Elijah. And he carried that grace. I say this because many territories have a heritage that is not being preserved. There are no people, there are hardly people that represent the continuity of God's program across territory. So, once in a while you will have mighty men, a man, a woman, a prophet, an apostle, an evangelist, etc. They would rise and do great things. And then for a period of time, you will still find people serving God casually. But you may not find that level and that dimension of impact again. And it is not because the people do not have access to that career. I may not have the time to tell you all of the secrets that really govern impartation. But then I just want to state one tonight as we prepare for this miracle service. I've had the privilege of working with God for a while. And I've had the unique, the unique, merciful, um, you know the Bible says, that blessed is the man whom God causes to approach his presence. Like lifting up the golden censer before Esther to say, come. You don't just enter the king's chamber because you want to. You may be around the palace, but you are called, you are initiated. And so sometimes as, as an election of grace, 
It is true that we can all approach the throne right now. But we're talking about depths and dimensions of intimacy with God. And the Lord has granted me by His grace, and not for my sake, for the sake of a generation, to have encountered the Holy Spirit in unusual dimensions. And I want to share with you, maybe in five, ten minutes, and then we'll pray. Because I do not want us to waste this experience. Every time we see men and women of God, many of you stood watching, doing the minister, and wondering from whence, you know, the fountain of grace from which these songs come from. There is one key that I want to teach us tonight. It is the power of brokenness. More than prayer, more than fasting, more than sowing seeds, there is no principle in the Bible that can replace the place of genuine brokenness. As far as accessing the power and the grace of God is concerned. The Bible says that it is the desire of God that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, that it covers the entire earth in the similitude of water covering the sea. So there is no, there is no confusion as to the fact that God desires an effulgence, a manifestation of His power and His grace in Abelkuta across the West all through Africa. But the problem is that God has conditions. This is something that people do not understand about God. When it has to do with working with God, believe me, there are conditions. The chiefest of them is not your intention. It's more than your desire. It's brokenness. It's a non-negotiable condition to host the grace of God for a generation. You can listen to any message you want to listen to. You can buy any anointing oil from any anointed man, respectfully speaking. But let me tell you sincerely, my brothers and my sisters, you can conjure every kind of oratical skills that you can find. You can study the, uh, uh, and, and train yourself to be able to communicate a sound exegesis of scripture. But nothing in life will ever replace the place of genuine brokenness. You've heard me say the price for all of God is all of you. Not your heart. Not your hand. Not your offering. Not your songs. You. This is the message that our generation does not want to hear. We admire what happens with broken vessels. It was Jesus that was speaking, Abel Kuta, and he said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So he's talking about the manifestation of glory. Then the next verse very quickly says, verily, verily, I say unto you. In other words, behold a mystery. I want to connect death and glory. He says, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. You can fall but not die. It falls and dies. The Bible says it abides alone. It does not sustain the ability to expand its influence. It says, but if it does die, then from that death, resurrection begins to happen. You want to carry the grace that was upon the fathers that came from this city. The West has a rich heritage of men and women who were discussing almost... The, the grandparents of most of you seated here were part of the, the pioneers of strange revivals. Some of them carried graces and mantles. They may not have been educated, but they were broken enough to veto that limitation. Couldn't speak English, but you could not deny the presence of God in their life. They would step into cities and without speakers, without amplifiers, Without clashing symbol, they would speak and there would be an echo. The realm of the spirit had regard for their stature because they were men who were broken. Listen to me. The real, the real quality that gives credence to your Christian experience 
It's not the dexterity and the prowess of your communication. Those things are just support systems. They are only valid when you are broken. I will tell you what brokenness is. Brokenness is a state that only God can bring a man in the first place. And then brokenness is a point in your life. Please look at me. It's a point of death where you lose the ability you lose the ability to fabricate your own agenda where you are completely dead to yourself dead to your will the will of man is one of the highest advantages that god gave you and if you can lay down that will so that the purposes of god be achieved that is valuable in the sight of god god gave a man a will i can choose to pay to stop loving God. It's an act of my will. And God will respect it. I can choose today that I do not want to be a Christian anymore. But when you now take that will and say, Lord, you gave it to me, but I lay it down. You make me royalty, but I choose to serve. Serve you with my life. Serve you in worship. You made me to see that your right hand, but I choose to bow, bow in worship and adoration. That's brokenness. Lord, I have my choice. I can run my life by myself at my terms, but I choose to lay it down before you. I pour my life like a drink offering. Listen. The Bible says the love of God can constrain a man. There are many things that love does. Love can grant access to revelation. Love can make faith work. But love can constrain a man. You are allowed to go wherever you want to go to. And then the more mature you become, someone will hold your hand and constrain you so that sometimes you will not do what you want to do. There are rules to power. There are rules to authority. That you want to host a grace that is generational. It takes more than just praying and fasting, as important as that is. It takes more than just Bible study and an understanding of scripture. There is a state of truthfulness. You get to a point where you do not have any agenda again in your life. That you have no business building an empire for yourself. The secret, I would always say, is found in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it's a mystery. I am dead, but I am alive. I told you that the weight of God is heavy. Only dead men can carry him. It only takes the strength of a dead man to carry God. You have lost our obsession we live in a celebrity phase and, and there's nothing wrong with that but that obsession to be celebrated apostle joshua selman mighty man celebrity you know that obsession drives us to fast for 40 days lord i came from a family where nobody has clapped for me before that becomes a motivation for 40 days fasting as sincere as it is you already miss it from day one listen let me tell you this until God sees himself as the final motivation behind all you do, you are not ready for business with God. You can pray, you can listen to messages, you can have revelations, but nothing promotes more than death. Death is the way to be loudest in the spirit. That when you die to yourself, then the earth can hear you. There is a relationship between death and glory. The power of God coming upon your life. The dispensing of the mysteries of the kingdom. Do you know that a generation does not listen to you just because you have something to say? There is a grace. It's a hear ye him grace. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You can be as eloquent. You can be intelligent. You can have the grace for signs, wonders, miracles. But when that investment of the spirit is not upon your life, you will be surprised at how people will be uninterested in what you represent. The generation does not hear you just because you have something to say. There is a grace. And tonight my first call is the call of death. 
that the same place where death finishes is where resurrection also starts. They all happen in the grave. I've come to a point in my life sincerely. I have no business building any agenda or empire for myself. Thank God for all of the things that He has done and continues to do through my life. Humbling. But this man you see in my life and in my death, all that I desire to see is Christ lifted and His glory revealed. Whilst we do that, he has created a system where we can also partake of the glory and the blessings that come with our submitting to him. But it should never distract us. Please listen, Abel Kuta, because I believe from tonight, there are, we, are, we are trusting that the floodgates will open up so that certain ancient mantles... Who is carrying, we were discussing yesterday, how many young people can you see reproducing the grace upon late Apostle Babalola? People have attended his university. People sit under a church and mentorship. But if you are not broken, the grace will not flow. Believe me. Brokenness. The Lord, everything about my life is for you. If you ever prosper me, it is because you are giving me an opportunity to be your treasurer. The last one disappointed you. Let me be the one who will not disappoint you. For the sake of thy house, I desire your good. That when God grants you access to the healing anointing, the goal is not to make a name for yourself. Even though in it, he will lift you. But the goal is that you'll be seen. That's why I sang that song. To see you high. To see you lifted up. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, the earth, not the ground, you, the earth, I will cause all men, I will draw all men unto myself. So that everything that we do becomes a revelation of Him. The songs, your life, the messages, the miracles. In a few minutes now, we're going to be celebrating the awe-inspiring hand of God upon our lives and people will be receiving all kinds of impartations. But if at the end of it, all you saw was Joshua Selman, I failed God. You are broken when men look at you and see him. They keep looking at you, but mysteriously, the more they look at you, the more they forget about you and remember him. They look at you, but cannot remember you. Because you are broken enough to become a mirror. That when they look at you, it's the imprint of his majesty upon your life. When they see a demonstration of his hand and the investment of the spirit upon your life, suddenly they do not idolize you. In as much as they appreciate you being the vessel, you remind them of him. John said that I may decrease and that you may this is how it works in the kingdom. I have seen several people fast. I have seen several people pray. I have seen several people buy books, fill their libraries with all kinds of books, attended all kinds of courses within this nation and outside, all in a bid to host the dimension of power and glory that they seek. And they do every other thing. And they neglect brokenness. You must get to a point where you are not ashamed to cause your knees to touch the ground for the sake of his majesty that lord my life revolves at the impulse of your desire what you want is my command that statement your wish is my command it's not just for relationship it's, it's for broken people what do you desire if all you want to happen in my life is for me to stand this way this becomes my posture Are we together now? It's a very powerful secret. Show me a man who is broken. And I show you a man who will never go out of relevance. This is why people have a lot of balloon success. They are up today two years. A territory celebrates them. You see it happen with music ministers. You see it happen with we servants of God. You are up today for a season and then you go down. 
It is not so with God. Your brokenness is like an anchor. It can hold on to the, the, the garment of God to make sure wherever He moves, you move with Him. More than just studying the Bible religiously, more than just praying religiously, we must get to points in our lives where we are truly surrendered. I hope you know that when you get born again, I know that we say, Jesus, I give you my heart. But what really happens is you receive his life. That's what the Bible says. When you get saved, you don't give Jesus your life. You receive his life. Are we together? You give him your life when you want to be used, when you want him to, to be used by him. <laughs> Giving him your life is the condition to be used by him. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, chapter 12 and verse 1 and 2, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and he calls it your reasonable act of worship. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. I'm yours. Here's the part of the song that I really, really like. Listen to me. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. This must be the anthem of the generation that will birth revival once again. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask, I surrender. Not my ambition. Not my desire. I'm not trying to use you to make a name. I'm not trying to use you to build a church. I'm not trying to use you to be relevant. I'm not trying to use you to be a popular man of God. I love you more than that. Whatever you ask of me, whatever. Not this is my life. Honestly, it's not a song for me. Whatever you ask, I this is what we need for the birthing of that hand. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. Shalabarat Shiada. Listen, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, if there is anything you will give me, you will give this man standing that will never distract me and make me to not love you. I'm praying in advance. May it never arrive. And even as I'm standing here, I'm still praying. Listen, money can distract you. Fame can distract you. We are human. And so when you come from a background where people have neglected you, people have despised you, it's only human that as you begin to rise, that, that, that passion to prove a point is there. And God says, that's too small a reason to carry my anointing. That's too small a reason to carry the grace for a generation. To prove a point? No, sir. The key must be to be a conduit through which His power and His grace be revealed. This is my message tonight. That if you can be broken enough, my brothers and my sisters, there is no limit to what God can do in your life. God will put his grace upon your voice. You will speak from one point and the nations will hear you. Because there is the angel of his presence. Through the pipe of your brokenness, 
it will transport everything God in you and take it to the nations. Whatever you ask of me, Every time I'm with God, I tell him, Lord, I'm not here suggesting things to you about my life. I am here completely broken. Let men keep saying whatever they think I am. For some, it's Apostle Joshua Selman, the great man. Thank you. But while all that noise is happening in the outer court, I'm here with him. Saying, Majesty, what do you desire in my life in this season? Sometimes you may want to go out and he will say, all I want is for you to sit down. Stay there. And he will ask you to sit down and not talk to you. He does not have to talk. He is Lord. Whatever you ask. There are times he will tell you this year. All the money that comes into your account, give it to me. He said, I rebuke that spirit. It can't be God. And he says, I was only showing you what is really Lord in your heart. What do I need your money for? The currency in heaven is power. You convert power to everything you want on earth. When God wants to make you wealthy, he gives you his divine power. That divine power gives you all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Hallelujah. So here is a music minister who wants to get songs like Minister Dunsin says, respectfully speaking, just because you want the land of Abel Kuta to hear your voice, you may be sincere, but you will go to the secret place and pray and fast and copy songs and not receive anything. Because the key that opens that fountain, do you not know that for a fountain, where don't you, the flood in the days of Noah, the Bible says the earth broke forth to allow what was inside to come out. The heavens now also open. That's what makes a flood. There must be a breaking, a tearing apart. But this man can say, Lord, I'm not seeking to be a musician. I just want to know you. I just want to honor you. I just want my life to reflect your grace. Suddenly, he starts hearing songs. The songs of the angels. The songs. Where is this coming from? It's coming from the standpoint of brokenness. And he's hearing those sounds and writing them. This is another man of God. He's not looking for fame. He's not just looking for a church. He's not looking for a crowd and a good name. All he wants to see is Christ glorified. He says, Lord, I'm available. If ever you seek for a vessel, find one in me. Don't pass my region and ignore me. I may not be the best, but I'm broken. I may not be as educated, but I'm broken. And here comes the jealousy of God upon that man. This is what I seek. Because no matter where I lift you and where I take you, you will not forget what I have done. Broken vessels are powerful. Are we blessed? This is very powerful. We are going to pray. But it's important for you to know that this is how it works in this kingdom. Our generation is losing the technology. We are trying to do every other thing to access real power. Not, not stories here and there today. God can do this. God will do this and then nothing happens. Genuine grace that can keep territories at, at a standstill. There is a prophetic that has been hovering around Abel Kuta looking for someone broken enough. You pass that mantle every day and the realm of the spirit is saying there is and there are people, I'm speaking especially to the generation coming. There are all kinds of wells 
waiting for broken vessels. Tonight may someone carry it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Broken enough to say, Lord, whatever you want my life to be, that's what it will be. If you ask me to stop preaching today, I will stop preaching immediately because His Majesty makes demand of that. Was that not what Vashti refused to do and made her lose her place? Vashti lost her place because of one single sin. She forgot she was queen only because she married a king. She was not a queen because she earned it. So her strength was in her weakness and she forgot it. But when Esther came, Esther mentored us on how to remain in good contact with Ahasuerus. Lord, I will bow to you to no other but you. Lord, I will worship you. Nothing hands have made but you, Lord. Tonight he demands in this place, I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Sing, Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow. When your life becomes a channel to see Him, that every time people see me, may they see you. Every time they hear me, may they hear you. It's been my prayer, sincerely. Preachers, when we return to a point where we are not ashamed of men seeing Him through our lives, it's not a thing of shame. It's great honor for men to look at you and remember him. It's proof that you are dead enough. Then we will see dimensions of power. I was sharing with Pastor Shola briefly at the hotel before we came. I lay down to sleep and into the morning I saw, you know how birds migrate. That's what I saw happening in this. I saw birds just coming to this auditorium and I looked and they already had the names of people they were landing on. It was, this is what I saw, I was telling him. So I know that tonight, I'm not just talking to buy time. God is doing a quick work, but will he find you? That's, that's the key. Will you escort others while he's touching people? You provide the fire Now provide the sacrifice You provide the spirit And I will open up the sun Fill me up I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you offer your bodies. Man of God, don't offer your church. You have offered your church enough. Offer your body. Music artists, don't offer your CD. You have given them enough. Offer your body. Living sacrifice. Lord, if you speak a voice in this generation, 
I am available and usable. Usable. You seek a country to transfer your power, your grace and your possibilities to the nations. Find one here. Find one here. We are talking of an overflow. A flood that will sweep across the nation. Let it be me from my innermost being. Fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to run. Wanna run over? Fill me up. Fly over. Fill me up, baby. I'll have a salad of bracata. I wanna run over. Many years ago, I was in a meeting in Kaduna. And then, while I was ministering to the people, a song came from heaven. You've heard me sing it many times. It says, You have my everything. You have my everything. You have my everything. You have get your part now. Say call of me, call of me, Lord. You have my hand. Say call of me. Say call of me.
on the front with the back, pray. Following online, pray. Break me, O oh God. Let me be a broken vessel. More than oratory, more than prayer, more than just fasting, that I be broken genuinely. Not seeking an agenda of my own, only to see the Christ glorified. Hallelujah. Now please listen. The Lord is going to be doing four things in this place and we'll wrap up this conference. Number one, we are going to be praying for the sick. It's time for that which stands as a hindrance between you and the next level that afflicts your body. Even this body has to be prepared. A body has thou prepared for me. Number two, I trust that we will speak to the ancient wells of Abel Kutai to spring up. We are going to speak to the flood gates to part heat and tita, and that everything that makes for revival, everything that makes for signs and wonders. Let your power flow in this place. Let your healing come. I call for times and wonders in this place. Oh, Jesus. I hear your own prayer now. Because I hope you are ready to sing. I'm not your Baba Baba Piyata. Ladara Bakata Brajade Belekatis, Karas Kabari Salita, 
and the lake of Bratisha has come a cut up. Stand to receive. Stand to change levels. It's time for the flood to strip everything that is not Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know why the Lord is starting tonight with women. I think I know why. Because women are gates in the spirit. A woman is a gate in the spirit. That womb you see is not just an instrument of carrying a child. No. Women are gates. When Jesus resurrected, the first person to see the resurrected Christ was a woman. So I want to pray because I'm seeing a grace that is coming on women. This is a strong anointing for revival. I want to bring them out here. I'm seeing 13, 1, 3, 13 people who pray for the sick shortly. Father, here in Abel Kuta we decree and declare by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic that every woman here who is ordained for the move of God that is coming in the name of Jesus, Deborah, Esther, by the Spirit of the Living God, I call you arise. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Please bring them. Take that grace now. I call for Esther. Deborah, by the Spirit. By the Spirit of God, let the floodgates of revival come upon the borders. Open their eyes to see, open their ears to hear the sounds of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to be fast. Now please listen. Please listen. There is going to be a baptism. Please listen. This is not for everybody. I'm not even saying up to 13 or 14. There is a unique expression of the Spirit for miracles, signs, and wonders. This grace. I know that we all desire it, but there are unique people. And many of them are men and women of God in ministry. Ministry will be barren and unfruitful without this grace. I want to pray. I'm just seeing fire around. And that's why the Lord is asking me to pray. When I pray, that grace will come on you. And shift your life, your destiny and your ministry to another dimension. Father, I pray by the Spirit of the living God. Upon men and women of God. Upon generals in the making. Even in the land of Abel Kuta, I pray. Let the fire that produces signs and wonders. Right now, let it rest upon you. At the count of three. One, two, three. Take that thing. Take that fire. Take that thing. Take that fire. Hallelujah. Madam, this woman, please come. You're a woman of God. You're a pastor. You're a, you're I want to pray for you. The Lord is lifting you in this season. I'm seeing a strange grace for miracles, signs, and wonders. You believe that? Please hold my hands. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, may that grace come upon you. This is the minister's son. I'm seeing one of the men of God here. A strong fire is coming on you now. Please bring that person for me. I don't know who, but I just saw an anointing. Please help them. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hey. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hey. 
I prophesy over you strength and fire for a new dimension in ministry. I shift you by the rod of a higher priesthood. Step into a new level of intimacy with the Spirit. And I decree and declare over your life the eyes to see, the ears to hear. I release grace upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My friend, lift your hands. You, lift your hands. An anointing is coming on you now. Bring that man here. Take that place now. In the name of Jesus. Bring it. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Madam, this woman raising her hands, come, your life is about to change. My friend, is he a pastor? Are you a pastor? Where? Hold on, please. Hold on, guys. Is the mic working? In Ogun State, yes. Yes, sir. You are a pastor? Yes, sir. You pastor your church? Yes, sir. Okay, I will pray with you. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Fresh fire. Take that grace right now. You step into a new dimension in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. The grace to communicate truth with power. I release it upon you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Madam, let me pray for you. I saw... I saw what looked like honey dripping on your head. I don't know you from anywhere. I want to pray for you. It's a new season that God is shifting you into. In the name of Jesus. Father, bring this woman into a new level in the spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus hallelujah now I'm going to pray for the sick shortly but the Lord is showing me a woman here you've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb for five years who is that? it's time for God to change you are in front here you are in front here it's not too far who is that? was she in front here? Please help us with another. Is there another mic that is working? Please. Let someone who can handle it help us so that. No, no, no. Some, a pastor, yes, please. Maybe this, please. How long have you been married? Five years. Five years. Where's your husband? Husband, because I thought he's here. Come, prepare for a baby boy. Come and stand. I will pray with you. Both of you are pastors. You are pastors. This is what I'm saying. Are you, are you a pastor, sir? Where? Missionary. We go to school to minister to young people. Okay, you are a missionary. You believe what I'm saying? This God, bar, let me tell you, in, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, He can change your life. I stand by the God of heaven because I'm seeing a baby boy. The, I don't care what the medical condition is. That's not what I'm asking. In the name of Jesus Christ. And here at this conference, we stand by God. And I release both of you. Step into that miracle. In the name of Jesus. I lose her womb. In the name of Jesus Christ. Huh? No. Look at me. Please give her the mic. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You are not yet five years. Please give her the mic. I'm seeing that there is something common between me and you. When did you get married? 2015, June. June. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying there is, there is, I'm seeing something similar between me and you. June. Is your husband here? June will make it five years since you got married. And you don't have a child. You are trusting God for a child. Do you believe that right here? Please, let's, let's minimum. I'm going to pray for the sick. If we do it like this, we, this place will be crowded. Minister Dunsin, when, when we are done, he's going to come and lead that, that Imole Day song. 
We are going to drive darkness in a way that we must cut it out of this place tonight. My sister, come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command everything that is not of God to leave you now. In the name of Jesus, go and carry your child by the power of the Holy Spirit. This lady too. What's your name? Are you married? Where's your husband? Your husband is he a pastor? Because I'm saying that this is a man of God. That's what I'm saying. Where is he? Okay, don't no problem. He doesn't want to come out. That. Where is he? You are wearing a yellow vest. Is there someone like that? Are you a pastor? Is, is that a husband? Do you know me? No, sir. Look at me. Let me tell you this. Not only are you going to receive the miracle of a child, finance has gone down. You need a miracle seriously in the area of finance. Because this thing is witchcraft, my brother. I need to pray for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Three things. Number one, you really need spiritual intelligence. Sit under a system that provides the mentorship that will open you up. Have I prayed for you? Look at me. Um, my sister, hold my hand. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! It's over. Gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you. You believe, you believe in God? Because... In the name of Jesus, here at Abel Kuta Believers Conference, you will never forget this conference. I command every power that is not of the Christ to let you go now. In the name of Jesus, I'm seeing something tight, her stomach is tight, I lose it now. For you, I pray for you. May God open you up supernatural dimensions of grace and even finances. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Abigail, Abigail. I'm hearing a name, Abigail. We are going to pray for the sick shortly. Please be patient with me. Abigail. The Lord is speaking to me. I'm hearing the name Abigail. You are an usher. And you are Abigail. Your name is Abigail. From where, my dear? Huh? I'm from Akowe. Where is that? I want to pray for you. Hold on. Bring the person that shouts under the anointing now, loud to the hearing of everybody. Bring her. The Lord brings salvation to your entire family. And the Lord is saying it is over. The plague of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I stand in agreement with the servants of God here. We banish darkness forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you from every oppression of darkness. Find freedom tonight and find freedom forever. In the name of Jesus. There is another person that shouts here too. Don't mind me, let me just do my mad thing. Walking by the Spirit. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord move this side, so I'm wondering why. And the Lord, please, let me have the person. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. I pray that this conference will cultivate a hunger for God. Stop experimenting. You can know God. There are things you cannot fake, you cannot guess. No. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Now watch this. There is someone here, you are a prophet. Truly, you are a prophet of God. But you will need an activation of grace. The power of God is going to come upon that person. Now, hold on. Listen. Please listen. I know that there are many people. There is a particular prophet that I'm looking for. Please help the person so he does not injure himself. The power of God will bring you out here now as I'm speaking. It is by the unction of the Spirit. Literally, you will come out by the Spirit. Just help the person so he does not enjoy himself or herself. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to open up prophetic fountains. 
prophetic fountain. My glory, the lifter of a mind. Now, O oh Lord, that's him coming. Are a shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter of a mind. Now I speak using these ones as points of contact all over this place. Everyone call into the prophetic office at the count of three. Let there be a breaking spot in the name of Jesus. Get ready. One, two, three. I release the grace. Take the fire for the prophetic. The eyes that see, the ears that hear. This is the heritage of this territory. I shift you to those dimensions. I activate those possibilities. In the spirit. Oh my glory. God the leaves are up. My glory. God the leaves are up. Hallelujah. I'm ready to pray for the sick now. Have I prayed for all of you here? Why are they here? Happy girls, I will pray with you in the name of Jesus. The power of God is coming on one of you. Eh? When that happens, then I will pray for the rest. One of you. The Lord is telling me a strong anointing is going to come on one of you. And the moment that happens, then I will pray for the rest. And then we'll pray. we have to pray for the sick very quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Very strong anointing is coming on one of you. And it will shift you to a new dimension in the spirit. And then I'm going to pray for the rest. It's a strange fire. That is going to take you to a new dimension. Lord, I pray for all these ones who have come in the name of Jesus. The various dimensions that they must step into. I release you into those graces. In the name of Jesus. I release you into those graces. Seven people are receiving the grace for intercession. I'm seeing that grace. An intercessor's anointing. One of them is here in the choir here. An intercessor's anointing. I'm seeing that great seven people that's what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus i release you into that grace i release you into that anointing in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please when i pray for them just clear the way i want to pray for the sick now i want to pray for the sick we have to work with time sometimes we are limited by time The man waving the is that a lady or a guy? Among those people waving their hands, the one wearing blue. Le, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where you are, just lift your hands. Shout Jesus, an anointing is coming on you now. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate miracles in this place. I want to pray for the sick man. There are people, who, listen please. There are people who have come here trusting God for His touch. You can stand in for yourself, you can stand in for your loved ones. Jesus will be glorified. Now, I'm going to ask Minister Dunstan to come and listen. That song is prophetic. As he sings that song, if he needs his backup, please just, just let them come. That song, Imole Day, as we drive out darkness. Afterwards, I'm going to pray for the sick. Please, if the missing child yesterday has come home, remember I prophesied. Where is the child? I prophesied yesterday. Where, where is the person? Please let me have the come. My God, my God, I'm about to die. The missing child yesterday is back home. Where are they? Please come. Let them come.
When, when you find them, let them come. Meanwhile, Minister Dusin, oh, this is the child. My God, I better put a look at this. Who shall speak a thing and it shall come to pass? Look at the boy. How many of you were here yesterday? This is the same way I'm prophesying to you now. That whatever has left your life, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I call it back to return in Jesus' name. When that mess up the side of life, hey, in the power that the gleams of life, you are the light that makes my face shine bright, so bright. And as we look your face tonight, we become the light. Hey, when darkness up the side of light, save the power We say you are the light that makes our face shine bright. Hey, and as we look here, hey, we become lift your voice and say, Ivana da, Okuku Para da, Ivana da, Okuku Para da. In the name of Jesus, Okuku Para da. this place hold on guys please lay your hands right now where you are trusting god let's disgrace the devil one more time in this city as we worship in your presence as we the holy spirit is gentle touch is flowing Listen, we are going to do it this way. Please listen, we will have to be very fast. I want you to listen to me. I am going to pray. Take your eyes away from whatever ailment. I don't care whether it is a death sentence, whatever it is. Take your eyes away from it. Look up to Jesus. As I pray for you now, it will be very fast. And please let's have, I don't know, maybe Pastor Shelby can help organize just one or two pastors. As soon as the power of God touches you, already many people have been healed here already. And I want you to check yourself. The moment you find out that the power of God has touched you, please, if they are coming to testify, just allow them. From the front to the back, the left to the right, I want to make your way. I don't know which of the aisles. You'll find your way here and we'll check you, just verify you, and we'll take a few testimonies here. After that, then we're going to do the final impartation. Don't miss it, please. The final impartation is where some of you will see come to life what you only saw in your dreams. You've seen it in your dreams. You've seen it in your visions. But you are asking, when will it come to pass? Tonight is the night. So please pay attention. Now I want to pray for the sick. I want to pray for the sick. They'll just check you, you know, just somewhere here. Now, I don't know why God does this, but it's very strange. There's a strong healing power here. 
but someone will shout under the anointing loud to the hearing of everybody then the healing power will begin to move that's not the shout the shout is coming I want to pray for the sick now Jesus ah. what are you turning to wine Open the eyes of the blind, and no one can you. Release your faith. The power of God is about to touch you. Into the me in the name of Jesus come on Abel Kuta in the name of Jesus my God in the name of Jesus I command every devil of infirmity in this place be gone now in the name of Jesus every spirit of infirmity be gone now in the name of Jesus. Right now I declare be healed. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed. Every blind eye I command be open now. Every deaf ear be open now. Everyone on crutches, everyone on a wheelchair. In the name of Jesus receive life. Life to your bones, life to your limbs, in the name of Jesus. Every blood condition, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. There are several ladies with lumps. Some breast lumps is disappearing right now. In the name of Jesus. There's someone who has like a growth in his ear verified medically that growth is disappearing right now in the name of Jesus God is healing a very severe condition of pile pile in the name of Jesus let it go in the name of Jesus let it go I'm seeing someone your right limb I don't know what is wrong with your right limb but the power of God is touching you right now be healed in the name of Jesus Migraine headache, be healed in the name of Jesus. Peptic ulcer, be healed in the name of Jesus. Hotness in the body, severe hotness in the body. I declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus. There's someone you don't, you don't smell. I don't know what happened to you, but it's like your, your sense of smell. Let it be restored now in the name of Jesus. It's like your left eye does not see well. I declare from wherever you are, may your eyes be open now. Any, anyone here with a bone condition around your lumbar vertebra, in the name of Jesus, let it be corrected now. Let it be corrected now. Your, uh, what they call this, your aunt, your uncle, in the name of Jesus, I don't know if you twisted it or something like that, but the Lord is bringing restoration now. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone has a, a case of heart palpitation, severe, you don't breathe normally. In the name of Jesus, right now the power of God is touching you. The power of God is touching you. The power of God is touching you. 
HIV be healed in Jesus name cancer be healed in Jesus name now, whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus be healed now hold up please there's someone you have a problem with your liver this is what the Lord is revealing to me and is getting you you are losing weight gradually almost like someone who has HIV right now in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you and setting you free now in the name of Jesus the Lord is showing me a lady your tummy is bloated almost like you are pregnant people will even think you are pregnant but it's not pregnancy this is a demonic thing right now I'm praying for you the power of God is touching you wherever you are in the name of Jesus constant help them please constant urination I don't know who that person is you can urinate within one hour several times and it's an embarrassing situation I don't know what that is but in the name of Jesus even right here right now the power of God is touching you the power of God is touching you the power of God is touching you you had a dream and someone hits your head is it with a stone or something an object and from that time you have pounding headache pounding headache the power of God is touching you now now whatever your situation is mentioned or not be healed now be healed now be healed now in the next five minutes I want you to check yourself watch this the moment you find out that the power of God has touched you I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain make your way here let's celebrate miracles very quickly Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Keep coming. Celebrate them as they come. Check yourself. Name above every other name. What can you do? Miracles are happening in this place. What can you do? This is the way for them. You are evil. You are able. You are able. You are able. Hallelujah. Are you are you seeing what God is doing in this place, Abel Kuta? My God. I think we should celebrate Jesus in one minute. Check yourself. Check yourself. Miracles are happening here. I don't know what that means. Stop. Hey, hallelujah. Hey. It's the sound of healing. Hey! Hallelujah! Let the sound Hold on. Hold on, please. Now, please be seated for a few minutes. My God. Miracles are happening here. We'll just have to coordinate them. If, if they are here for miracles, Victor, please help them so that we can coordinate it. Yes, sir. Chronic ulcer. Hold on, guys. Okay. Chronic ulcer. Chronic ulcer. Un- constant stomach pain. Even like, I started praying. Much. I was just for how long? Pain. For many years. And right now, come. Give Jesus praise. Gone. Gone forever. Please, let's have some ushers. Maybe one or two in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Very quickly. Okay, this is the urination issue. Urination. Let her talk, my God. Frequent urination is always in How long? Very often. I go at some back and forth. Did it happen here even while you were in the meeting? And right now you feel God has done a miracle. Come. Look at me. It will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Gone and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. Yes, please. Go ahead. The Lord has touched you. Let's take a few testimonies. And we, leg, if we can bone, get another mic, we can spread them so we have one here and one here. If that can work. Bone, leg, bone. 
quickly. You, you prophesy that there's somebody with right leg. Your yes. right leg. Yes, I still call my doctor today. She was a chief in Abuja. Yes. That's what happened to you now? Me. Come. Boy, jump. Jump. jump up. Any pain? Any pain? Only you can do what no man can do. Hey, only you can do. Only you can do. Only you can heal. What no man can heal. You are healed now, you are healed forever. In Jesus' name. My God. Hold on. Hold on, please. My God, Pastor, look, look how many miracles. Jesus. Go ahead. When he mentioned the kidney case. Kidney. What's your name? My you name can is turn face the camera. Yes. My name is Glory. Last okay. week. We were trying to come for um, miracle service at Zaria. Okay. But the thing just changed hand and I went to hospital. They said I had, I had um, a blood problem and it has affected my kidney. So I used to have pain in my stomach. Okay. Sometimes I feel as if something is moving in my and stomach. What happened to you now? The pain just... The pain just come. My God. <laughs> Any pain. Check yourself. Any pain. It's gone completely. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I will never, never see anyone like you. Hey, I never see any, I never see anyone. I never see anyone. I never see anyone. Oh, look at this. Where's the man? Come, Pastor. Huh? She's a witch. She told me she's a witch. That she put it in my food. And it's like HIV. In my food. HIV. That you have HIV. Yes. Calm down, my dear. Listen. Don't worry. Listen. It started, it started with the stomach. So and I know that since the stomach has healed, it's My dear, gone. look at me. You see, let me teach you something. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. There are many spirits, but there is one that when it happens, you know it is that spirit. And it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Why would God come and heal kidney and then leave any other thing? No. Everything God does, He makes sure it is good. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, HIV and everything leaves. Gone forever. Next person, quickly. Please, quickly, quickly, quickly. Let's, we have to help to organize the lump issue. Lump. 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 Yes. Go ahead. First lump for seven years. Seven years. No. You don't have to put your hands. <laughs> seven years. Breast lump. And it's gone. Ah. You are the Lord that can get You are the Lord that can get Never return to you again in the name of Jesus ice, Christ. Ice, God bless ice, you. Ice, Hold on, please. Ice. And the man of God mentioned that somebody that does not see with a left eye very well. Anytime I'm reading it, it should be as if a skill. Right now, yes, cover now. the one you used to see with. Follow me. You are the Lord that can get what is this? Go ahead. This boy can could never even stand up at all. But when we were praying, he was paralyzed. He was standing, but he could not balance. But when he was sitting on the chair, so when he was sitting on the chair, yes. So when he was praying, he said he wants to stand up and he stood up by himself, but he's not standing by himself. Come, bring him. 
my God. Father, in the name of Jesus, not only will this boy be perfected, my boy, look at me. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord himself perfect this boy. The Lord that granted him the grace to stand. In the name of Jesus, may this boy even become a mighty man of God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Look what God is doing. Next person, my God. All these people are miracles. My God. All sound. All yes. sound difficult breathing. Come. All sound in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it go never to return. Next person, quickly please. What? This is the person you talked about with partial deafness. What's wrong? What was wrong with you? Partial deafness. Them, I just talk. Partial deafness. Deafness. Yeah. Where? My right side. How long? Since secondary school. Are you sure? Yes, sir. And now? Yeah, it has you could. Come. Which yes, one? Right there. Close the one that was working. Jesus, hallelujah, glory, majesty. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle. Lift it up and say, He's the Alpha and Omega. A shout. Hallelujah. Let's hear Mama's testimony. Praise the Lord. Mama the doctor God. diagnosed me for um, muscle interlocking and backache four years ago. So the I was doctor. always in pain. Okay. They diagnosed okay. me for muscle interlocking. My okay. leg on my left yes, side please. and backache. So I'm, I'm always in pain. Anytime I take off either, I always have problems. What happened to I you now? I managed to come to this program today. I couldn't dance very well. I can't climb. You couldn't program. dance? Yes. And I right now? Yes. Ah, Mama, come. You will dance here with Minister Dutri. You are the glory of God. You are the mighty God. You are the mighty God. You are the glory. at this. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. You see, miracles have a message attached to it. It's not just the validation of a man of God's anointing. Miracles are a statement. If God would fix something in Mama's body, what is it in your life that He cannot fix? Something's moving. Something's changing. Return to you again by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yes, please. I've been having a pain on my left breast for the past three years. Pain on your left breast. Come and it's gone now. My God, my God, never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. Next. Yes, please. Next. I normally have the pain on my right. Uh, your breast. your right breast. Come. Are you seeing the kinds of miracles that God is doing now? If something that was there and now is gone. That is a message. It means that there is something God is saying. That what used to be, no matter how long it has stayed, that the power of the Holy Ghost can take it out of a man's life completely. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you. Gone and gone forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. Constant breastfeeding. Constant breastfeeding. My body is eating me. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, never returns to you again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Okay, nothing else about the past six I want to hear Daddy's testimony. This man, this our elderly father, and the woman behind him. Let me know what happened to them. Yes. I've been having a plastic ulcer for two years. When I was coming, I was having a sharp pain in my, my chest. Sharp pain? Yeah, in my chest. My God. By the time you gave those who are having problem with ulcer, I just did release. And what happened now, sir? It is no longer there. Completely. Completely. Come, sir. My God, listen. You see, the Bible says the thief cometh not, 
but for to steal. Look, 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 this is our father. And at his age, the devil is that wicked to oppress this man's life. But the Bible says, I am come. It's not a sermon, it's an experience. I am come. You will know I have come. Because I come to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. Daddy, we celebrate you and in the name of Jesus, it will never return to you again. It's gone and gone forever. In Jesus' name. Yes, please. I had an accident some years ago. Hold on, please. Let's hear her testimony. Go ahead. And um, What's I your injured, name, madam? My name is Tolu Lope. Okay. And I injured my right knee. You had an accident how many years ago? Uh, two years. Okay. And what happened? And when you spoke the word, it didn't left. Where? Your, which of them? Come. Try to lift it. Accident. And now, any pain? Jump. Jump. Try. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, the Bible says we were like them that dream. I can see everything coming around. Hey! Turning around. See everything. Can you see everything? Turning, 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 turning. See everything. Return to you by the power of the I have two online testimonies. Hold on, please. Someone Wait. was knocked out uh, online. The, online. Someone okay. was knocked out by the power of God in Songwater while streaming on Where's online that? in Songwater. Songwater. The power of God came on the person there. Then someone while streaming just got a mail of admission with full funding from University of Dallas, Texas. While streaming. My God. You are streaming and watching from wherever. And suddenly an email comes. Remember the Bible says, I desire to come to you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder things from getting to people. What's wrong with that mama? She couldn't walk. Check her. Just check her. Before. Okay, go ahead. Yes, please. Just be patient. Let's just... I've been working the water for the past six years now, but this night, I just... What, what happened to you? I didn't see anything again. What, what, what was wrong before? Sir, also. All sir, come. In the name of Jesus, it is gone, gone forever, never returns to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. 20, 2012, I was diagnosed with hepatitis B, a chronic liver problem. And hepatitis was, B? Yes, sir. And chronic liver problem? Yes, sir. And so many doctors have told me that it is not terrible, it can only be monitored. But when the man of God made mention of hepatitis, uh, liver problem cases, I believe it and I know that I am healed. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it never returns to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Please sit for a few minutes. Sit for a few minutes. I know you're standing. Just be patient. For My mom has been um, suffering from lumps in her brain. So when you were praying and you were saying uh, about lumps, I believed and I prayed also. So Where I just called she? her. She's at home. So I prayed and I believed and I called her now. And come, she, in the name of Jesus, okay. come quickly. In Jesus' name, it never, never returns to you again. Go ahead. Praise God. Heal of chronic ulcer for the past four years and back pain. Chronic ulcer, come. In the name of Jesus, chronic ulcer, back pain, leaves never to return again in Jesus' name. I have an online testimony. There's no. an online testimony Somebody here. Somebody said he felt a skeletal pain in a lumbar region for four to five years. You mentioned that. Yes. And he said, I just flex my back now and I feel nothing. Completely gone. Your back pain, when I bend forward and backward, it's all gone. From where? Online. Is Okay, online. No, online. No. Person is streaming. Yes, go ahead. Okay, I was diagnosed of fibroid, gastritis, peptic ulcer. And ah, how come, do you know you're healed? You, you, you see how the I, devil... I started feeling come, my dear. This. Come. Let her come. You were diagnosed of fibroid, peptic ulcer. How long? Gastritis, fibroid. I started feeling uncomfortable in my stomach. And then I... I told God, I said, God, it's very hard for them to mention peptic ulcer. And everything wrong with me is even inside. I don't even understand. And immediately you mentioned peptic ulcer. And then on my way out, I started feeling so uncomfortable. My hands started burning. And then I just knew that God has done it. Place your hand on your stomach. It will never return to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Healed and healed forever. In the name of Jesus. 
I've been having this kind of branches in my body for long. And I kept using drugs, but it keeps reappearing and so okay. on. Can, can we morning, just, let's, let's just see. There are so many people. Let's just see how we can just take uh, maybe three or four. And then I just generally pray for the rest so that we can do the impartation. So there, there are so many, so many miracles now. We'll just have to manage it. I know that there are still a few. You can do well, whether or not your testimony is taken here. I think there should be a way to just um, pen it down and then... So yes. this morning, when I was going to school, I felt another place at the back of my neck. Then this place started inching me and I felt pain. But when Apostle just mentioned we should place our hands on anyway, it's telling us. I just believe God has healed me because Come. the pain was never there. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hold on. Let her go now. Out! Now! In the name of Jesus. It's gone. Over. Yes, go Praise ahead. God. I used to nurse this um, chronic um, part. Even while wow. standing, while standing, it was aching me. So immediately the man of God said, um, some, a lady here is suffering from pie. It's gone. Immediately, it, it was as if, I don't know, as if they, they put, uh, they applied a balm there. And after that, oh. I, I, I don't In have anything. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pile is a very terrible and discomforting situation. Stand, my dear. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. We seal this miracle. It is gone and gone forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Streaming online all the way from Kenya. Healed from heart palpitations, like you mentioned, and toothache instantly. I have another one all the way from Italy. Streaming online. Back pain gone completely. All the way from Italy. Yeah. Come that's on, that's celebrate that's Jesus. That's another one here in the right hand. She do complain a lot when I called her last. She was like, she could not sit. What well, happened now? So when he prayed, I went outside to call her. I told her to carry her Bible and read it. And immediately she cried. I told her not to use anything, glass or anything. And she picked her Bible. She was reading it for me without any mistake. And I asked her, is the high to say, it's okay, that is clear now. Hallelujah. Right. Come, my dear, in the name of Jesus, we agree for mommy. Perfection on her eyes. And may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the day? Open up the door. Will you open up the day? Open up the door. I've shared it countless times. I've had the privilege to receive impartations directly from Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I have seen Him. And my life is a testament of that which has come from Him. And in one of my encounters, the Lord told me that everywhere I would go to preach, there must be people there. That the fire that came from Him to me, the light, there must be someone in that meeting that that light can come upon. Number two, I've shared a few of my encounters. I've had the privilege to meet a few people, some in their lifetime, who had met the generals of old. And I remember one of them was talking to me, and I've shared it with you many times. 
how that one of the generals told him, he says, never die with the anointing that is on you. When the days are almost spent, find young men, transfer this grace upon them. Because every time God sends a word to Jacob, it's because of Israel. He doesn't send the word to Jacob because of Jacob. You know, I was telling pastor that what Dunsim did here was very prophetic. I had planned that somewhere, in, as I was ministering, I would call those who had the grace for psalmistry. And then have Dunsim just speak over their lives. So I was touched when he was already doing it. But listen to me. We are made first by the light that we see. And then by the empowerment of the spirit that rests upon us. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. And I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My assignment as a man of God is to always ensure that I never return to minister to a people at the same level of grace that I came the last time. Otherwise, you'll be a waste of time. There should be something that is coming upon you now that did not come last Abel Kuta Believer's meeting. That is going to be the proof of growth in the spirit. That by the privilege of his mercy, we have contended for dimensions and higher realms of possibilities. I know some of you yesterday came with a point of contact. I told you it may be whatever it is. If you did come with it, I want you to lift it up. And while you stand, I want to pray. Thank you for your patience. This is the final moment we want to pray. You don't have to bring those out under the anointing. Please protect whoever is sitting by your left and right. If you are under the anointing, just see to it that they are not injured. I want to pray for you. This is the final moment. Such as I have. That's what Peter said. In the name of Jesus, I pray first for all those who are called into the fivefold ministry. In the name of Jesus and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I release the grace for the next level of ministry, the grace that can bear the biggest outpouring in this city. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. Take that grace now in the name of Jesus. There are financial apostles in this season that God is raising. Men and women strong economically with the wealth of nations as an individual. It will not just happen by business prowess. There is a dimension of wealth that does not just happen by buying and selling. There is a dimension of wealth that is wealth by the finger of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray, as many who are called into that ministry, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. May that anointing rest on you now. May that anointing rest on you in the name of Jesus. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. The canker worm can eat time so that the only thing growing in your life is your age, but nothing else grows. I pray for you. I don't know what has been eaten from your life. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I command the grace for restoration on you. And he ran 
and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands by the Spirit of the living God, standing in agreement with Hallelujah. Thank you. I stand in agreement. That's all right. Thank you. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, receive the grace for speed. Abel Kuta, receive the grace for speed. Five years in one year. Ten years in two months. Hallelujah. Now you must receive this one. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. There is a grace called favor. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And the proof will be that when you shall go, ye shall not go empty. Everything that brings emptiness to your life, in the name of Jesus, carry favor tonight. Carry favor tonight. Favor with men. Favor with victims. Favor with men. In the name of Jesus. Ezekiel 47. And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was to my ankle. And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was to my knees. He measured a thousand cubits, it was to my loins. And he measured a thousand cubits, it was a river. I pray for you. Higher dimensions in the spirit, step into it. Higher dimensions of vision. Higher dimensions of the prophetic, the apostolic, the evangelistic. Higher dimensions of healing. Receive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The flood also symbolizes judgment. God is able to judge the wicked. He said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. I pray for you, anyone who has made himself an enemy of God in your life, by this conference, the way the river separated Egypt from Israel, I separate them from your life forever. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It was Jesus that was speaking and said, and I will build my church. I'm speaking to the church in Abel Kutan now. And the gates of hell. I'm glad that there are fathers here that represent the spiritual voices in this land. We stand in agreement with their graces and we speak to the church in Abel Kuta. You shall not go down. The spirit of revival will never die in this land. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, we speak to the generals that must arise in this season. We sound the shofar. Across the length and the breadth of Abel Kuta, arise in the name of Jesus. Elijah, arise in the name of Jesus. I challenge the spirit of death. Listen, over anyone's life here that wants to bring you down to the grave, be delivered now in the name of Jesus. Every vision you have that has refused to come to light. Dreams. Songs. Prophecies. Books. Dimensions of revelation. I decree and declare. I call it come to light now. Come to light now. Let me speak to the soul of this city. Every city has a soul. 
Ah. Take it higher for me, please. We are rounding up. Atmosphere. in your life. Today, in the name of Jesus, as the flood moves over this land, it takes away shame and reproach forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. I stand in agreement with all the organizers of these meetings. Many times we forget to pray for them. We pray for every other person who has received. And then we leave them. But the Bible says a worker is worthy of his wages. We use Pastor Shola and Pastor Shegu as points of contact to all of the workers, the choir, the protocol in the name of Jesus. Everything that is alive grows. Therefore, we shift you to new dimensions. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when men say there is a casting down, for you we decree and we declare that there will be a lifting up. Every church represented in this city rise to a new level, from glory to glory. And we we pray using bishop as a, as a point of contact for allowing this auditorium and the sacrifice. Bishop, in the name of Jesus Christ, we speak over your life and over this ministry and by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic I stand in agreement as one who has been called by God it's an election of grace I measure a thousand cubits in the spirit and we shift this ministry to a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ as minister Dunstan has prayed over you all those who are called into the ministry of chemistry, I stand in agreement with you. New songs, melodies from the spirit. You will write the songs of Miriam. You will sing the songs of victory in the name of Jesus. Hear me. And finally, for every one of you who is on this ground, you have sacrificed right from the beginning of this conference through the sun, through the heat. Inconveniencing yourself while I came, I saw people just around the window, some standing right to the back, some even the outskirts of this place. It is impossible to come before God and tabernacle these three days and then return without a testimony. Therefore, I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus, every testimony that must manifest in your life before the end of March. I call it for let it let it come running after you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please just just be patient with me. 
I'm sorry, I know our time is gone. In two minutes, you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. We cannot share the grace without giving me an opportunity for an encounter. I have to suspend this before I do the last, just speaking over your life. You are saying, Apostle, if you give me an opportunity, I need Jesus. If you need Jesus, you know. There's no point pretending. Wherever you are, from the back to the front, run like there's fire on the mountain. I will just count one to five. Come and stand right here. I want to pray with you very quickly. There's nothing to be ashamed of. One. Two. Apostle, I've seen my life and I know that I need Jesus. Please, if you are coming, run. Clear the way for them. I don't want this conference to finish. Then I go back to my life. Three. Jesus is still calling many. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.